Okay, this is part two of the water co cooling video. And I just remembered a few things that I wanted to mention. Um, so I decided to do a second part. And the first thing that I want to mention is that if you're going to go to water cooling, make sure you have a decent power supply. Because if your power supply doesn't have enough current to power your water pump and your graphics card then you might end up killing a graphics card as I did. Um, my old graphics card and my old power supply um, when I first set up the water cooling um, I noticed a pixelated screen and I, I was worried that um, I just burned out the graphics card because the heat sink wasn't installed properly or something like that but uh, in the end it ended up being the po uh, power supply so one of your first considerations when building a water cooling system is to check to make sure you have a power supply that's rated enough to power both your pump and whatever requirements are needed for your video card and obviously for the rest of your system. And um, I believe you have to have most of the power coming off one rail uh, rather than two or make sure that uh, you split the power between the two rails. Um, and if you're like me and uh, um, don't do the math to figure out um, if it's going to work, you just buy a big power supply and hope for the best. So, as you can see, I bought the Cooler Master 1000 watt Silent Pro, and so far, there's no problems. And uh, yeah, this is a reasonably priced uh, 1000 watt power supply. And it's also nice because it's modular, the connectors are modular, so you can add or change as many connectors as you need for your setup and it's also reasonably quiet. Okay, some other things that I wanted to mention are, um, let's see, what else did I want to mention? Um, just about the barbs. The barbs are the fittings and for the graphics card and um, on this graphics card you can see that the tubing runs kind of, if you were to run the tubing out this way there wouldn't be enough room so in order to fix that problem you have to buy right angle fittings for as I mentioned before they're like three-quarter inner dimension tubing for that size tubing so yeah if you're going to if you have limited space because you have a lot of cards in your PCI slots then make sure you get the right angle fittings because they'll allow your tubing to uh, fit and then you know connect to the uh, fitting and then it makes a right angle onto your um, graphics cooler so yeah right angle fittings are something you might want to think about um, if you're having trouble getting the uh, everything to fit in your case when you're doing water cooling um, the other thing I wanted to mention is compression fittings compression fittings are a type of fitting you can buy um, they basically, how they work is that they have kind of a, a screw down uh, circular kind of part that uh, screws the fitting down to the tubing. Unfortunately I bought a set of these compression fittings and they didn't work with this type of tubing. So, but not a problem because I only bought one set of compression fittings so not a huge waste. And um, you can still use them. Um, you just can't use the screw down compression uh, to hold them in place. So, so far I've been pretty lucky and this uh, Primo Chill tubing is really good for, you know, it's there's been zero leaks and um, I haven't used compression fittings because uh, they don't fit with this tubing. And um, the other thing is if you want to fasten um, 
some of the fittings come also and some of the water cooling uh, coolers will come with um, like little metal compression fittings um, so you can use those if you can believe it or not um, you may say I'm reckless or anything like that but I don't even have fittings I don't even have um, any type of uh, you know like um, on the fittings I don't have anything to secure most of the tubing on which some might see, see as reckless but I haven't needed it and there's been no leaks so I'm not really worried about it. The other thing you can use is just plain old zip ties and that's what I recommend because zip ties you could like buy a bag of 50 for a couple bucks and just buy the right size zip ties and um, if you're worried about leaking then just uh, everywhere you put tubing just cinch up a zip tie around the base of the tubing where it goes onto the fitting and that should give you some added security. Um, uh, for this setting, as I said, um, oh yeah, on this motherboard, which is uh, an MSI Pro E motherboard, the uh, Northbridge and Southbridge run really hot, and uh, I just jiggled the camera, but uh, the Northbridge and the Southbridge run really hot, so there's nothing I could really do about that. Um, you can go all out and you can actually buy water cooling for those, but um, I basically, you can see that fan and it's just sitting, it's actually sitting right there blowing air onto uh, the north bridge or the south bridge and there's also a huge 120 fan right here that I have that I'm blowing onto the heat sinks that you can't see them but there's copper heat sinks you can buy a package of them and I think there's like eight in a package and they just uh, they kind of peel and stick and they just stick onto your your RAM on your video card and then this fan is just cooling those heat sinks so that's it and this fan is also blowing on you know the north bridge or the south bridge as well so cooling that down so one of the things you'll find with i7 systems is that the north bridge and the south bridge run pretty hot and I also have um, two fan controllers one fan controller controlling this fan and one fan controller controlling one of the internal fans here, so uh, let me just try to show you the fan controller if I can reach it. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but there's the fan controller, and those are ha handy to have. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but you can buy um, quite expensive. I'll just leave it there. You can buy quite expensive fan controllers um, that even mount in bays, but. Uh, I don't see the point. I think you can save some money and you don't have to buy that. Um, this is kind of a cool one. It's the Zalman fan controller and you can see it's got the colored lights and that's the lowest, middle, high setting. Uh, I guess that's extreme setting and then that's back to the lowest setting and then it's got a rotary dial too here. So you can just rotary dial it down. So that's a little fan controller. They're handy to have and um, I recommend getting a couple. Some of them even come with fans. So yeah, that's uh, I think one of the Zalman basic fan controllers. And um, I guess um, I'll list uh, some of the parts at the end of the video maybe so everybody can see what parts I use exactly and maybe also if you have any questions don't hesitate to email me and I'll try to give you some sort of answer or direct you to where you can find an answer. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is modifying the case and this case had to be modified slightly and there used to be a drive bay here that I've removed to make room for everything. Um, the drive, I'm just using one drive right now and it's in kind of a silicone case. You can get these on eBay for like two dollars. Um, there is no drive um, DVD drive right now because um, I'm in the process of uh, upgrading my drive to a Blu-ray drive and um, so yeah this case has been modified slightly just not really in any big way but and also you can see I'm running the, the tubing out through the back of one of the fan the fan uh, holes right there 
So anyways, that's my part two. And um, oh yeah, here's the coolant that I'm using. Um, there it is right there. It's called PC Ice. And it's non-conductive coolant, it says. And I'd advise you to get something that's like this, that's non-conductive coolant, because um, just in case, you know, there is a leak, you want to take some precautions so that, you know, hopefully the leak doesn't uh, kill any of the other components. Oh, and the last thing I'll mention is um, uh, if you want to see the actual temperature changes, there's a, a little application you can download. It's called SpeedFan. And you can download that little application and um, it connects uh, to the motherboard and it'll tell you the temperature of you know that's going on in your comp on in your system so with a couple speed uh, little fan controllers and with something a little free application called speed like speed fan I think you can uh, you can avoid you know spending that extra money on fancy fan controllers etc so anyways uh, good luck if you decide to um, water cool cool your computer and um, a happy uh, PC gaming everybody